And there guys, we will start with the broadcast section that's got no embargo, followed by an embargo section of 10.30 p.m. tonight. No live tweeting or blogging during the broadcast section, please, and phones on silent. Michael. Thanks, um, Hi, Ange. Um, yeah, from the other night, I think uh, the only one that will, uh, that's missing is uh, Gio uh, LaCelso. He, he got a bit of a quad strain so while we took him off at half-time, so it's nothing too serious, but uh, obviously we've got the international break coming up. So we're kind of hoping not too long after that, um, everyone else got through and is available. So let's dive straight into transfers. I know you've got a flyer. Yeah. That first one was just the fuller buster, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. just <laughs> softened me up. Yeah, go for it. No, I was going to no, I thought Mickey yeah. Van Den might have to say that. Okay, all okay. right, um, Brendan Johnson's clubs are still talking. I know you always said that you can't never replace Harry Kane. That's someone who's not a like for like, but exciting. Not really. I mean, it, it's again. I, I'm kind of in the position where, you know, obviously other people are in control of those matters, incomings, outgoings, and I, again, I, I'm not really bought into the loop until you know things are concluded. So, for me to talk about you know potential players when, uh, whether that's in or out, whether when it may or may not happen, I just you know, I just don't think it's my place to talk about it. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously, we're, we're countdown clock says nine or ten hours, we'll, we'll find everything out in the next sort of short period and uh, we'll go from there. I'll be outside at midnight. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you do get one or two in though today, looking at the players who started so well, Destiny, Guillermo, will you be happy, Matters? Will you be happy overall? Yeah, look, uh, I mean, the, the ones we've brought in so far, you know, I think you know, the evidence shows that they've all been really good contributors for us and that's that's what you look for so like I said you know whether it's Vicario or, or, or Matters or Mickey Van Der Veen, uh, Manuel Solomon and, and even sort of Destiny coming back um, you know coming in sort of for his first year I'm really pleased and, and that's what you're looking for because obviously it's not just about bringing players in but if you're bringing players in and, and they are contributing straight away it's probably a good indicator that you know the business we've done so far has been good but um yeah, again, until you get to the end of the window and you know exactly what, where it all falls and we're into the season, uh, we won't know the exact outcome of everything. <coughs> Excuse me. There's clearly a, a number of players who need to move out mm. as well, maybe loan or permanent. You, you know the squad you've got now. Some are turning down moves and aren't moving. Mm. If they do stay, Andrew, and that looks like some might, What's your plan? Integrating them back into the squad because it is a big squad, isn't it? But what's yeah. your plans on some of those players? You don't have, don't see a few. Yeah, uh, no one's not been integrated to the squad. There's no one that hasn't been training with, with the team. So, you know, we, we, I'm not sort of isolating anyone at the moment. As you said, you know, players have got their own reasons for making these decisions. But ultimately, you know, come the deadline today, we're going to have to name a 25-man list and we've got more than that at the moment. So some people are going to miss out. And then, you know, I guess, again, it's, it's sort of up to them to sort of decide, um, you know, what the next step is. But... From my perspective at the moment, like I said, we haven't <coughs> excluded anyone from training. The numbers are manageable right now, and um, whilst they're manageable, you know, I don't see the need for us to do sort of anything different to what we have been doing. Thanks, mate. Good afternoon. There are a lot of changes at Spurs this summer. How pleased are you with, uh, in the league, the players and yourself were able to adapt so quickly and work so well as a collective? Yeah, look, I, it's been... <coughs> Encouraging and promising, I guess, is the, is the word. So I kind of trying to define it as we, we we've you know I've already said we've done a lot of changes this year. You know we've changed coaching staff, we've changed the way we train, we've changed the way we play, we've changed personnel, some significant personnel. You know within that context, you know that whenever that's there's such major change that it it, it takes a while for for things to really feel comfortable for everybody you know the, the whole club because even me I'm still new so you know the way we all work but so within that context I, I've been really encouraged by what I've seen you know the players are really trying to play the way we want to they're showing real character and I keep using the word resilience to to you know adjust and, and not let the fact that you know so many changes have happened to affect you know, our performance, our performance has been fairly consistent um, because it's very easy, you know, for the players to say, well, you know, so many changes to have excuses as to why we, we we wouldn't start well. I mean, we've had, 
you know, four official games so far and three of them have been away from home. So it's not exactly been an easy start for this group of players. So I like the fact that they've shown that character. But I also know we've got a long way to go. We're only very much at the beginning and, and we've still got plenty of challenges ahead. Despite the defeat that Fulham, how important was Richardson's goal for his confidence levels and his role in this team moving forward? Um, look, I, I guess because everyone talks about it and, and I'm not in Richie's head and I'm not in the players' heads to really know how they feel but you know, I guess it stops people talking about the fact that he didn't score but I was happy with his contribution. I, you know, I already said I thought probably the other night was probably, you know, he wasn't at the same level that he has in the other three games but he gets a goal so people sort of focus on the goal but I'm still looking at, you know, contribution to the team and I still think there are areas that, you know, Richie could have, you know, needs to improve for us to you know, keep improving as a team, but he's not the only one. All of them are in that boat. But anything that gives a player confidence, belief is is great. You know, particularly for strikers, I, I get that because, like I said, that's what people focus on. But you know, I wasn't unhappy with Richie before he scored the goal. What's the biggest threat you expect from Burnley? Um, a couple. I mean, I, I really, you know, I, I love the way that you know Vincent Company went about tackling the championship it's it's a really tough league everyone knows that and I thought the way his team played and and really had a clear identity uh, I thought was outstanding and looking at their first two games that's how they're going to tackle the Premier League so you know that there's belief within that squad in the manager and and in their methods um, you know they're a hard-working team they're a very fit side you know you look at all the sort of running measurements um, during the week, and they're they're up there. Um, so and at home, um, really good pressing team. So we're going to get challenged for sure. I mean, playing away in Premier League is always tough anyway, but it'll be a good challenge for us. And, and we're going to need to be at our, our sort of current best, you know, the best we can be right now um, to to overcome that because you know they're going to work hard, they're going to press us, and we're going to have to be really brave and believe in our football to get through it. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good mate. Um, it's the third away game in a row. Um, sorry, third away game in four. Um, I was speaking yesterday to West Ham manager David Moyes, who kind of questioned why you had to play three away games. Do you feel it's a bit unfair that you, you've only had one home game so far, and it's, it's the start of the season has been so tough in terms of the schedule? It is what it is. You know, I mean, there's no point. Um, sort of, I assume these things are done. Um, because of you know, some, I don't know, fancy algorithm or something, you know, it's, it's, I assume it's a random thing or some process behind it and we got dealt with, we got dealt with. At some point, I'm sure that flips and we'll obviously get the equal amount of home games. Obviously, the cup game being away sort of exacerbates that because, like I said, we've had you know, three games away from home in a week, four out of our first five. Um, and our first home game was a really good game. You want to sort of grow on that, but... For a team that's in transition, there's no greater way to find or reveal character, you know, than making it tough. So, in many respects, if we get through this spell well, it's, it's good, you know. Um, I think it, it helps us build some real uh, strength within the, the sort of unity of the team. You've been linked with several players that you've already spoken about Brendan Johnson, Colin Gallagher is another, Wade Kelly is another. You, you sat here about a month ago when you, you first met us and you said that you love a rebuild. Is this the kind of idea you had when you were set there a month ago, how Spurs would look now in terms of a rebuild? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's part of the process, yeah, but it's, you know, the rebuilds don't happen sort of, you know, the rebuild is a is something that happens over a, a period of time and you have to overcome certain hurdles and, you know, certain <coughs> landmarks along the way. One is change of personnel, so that's obviously something. Then change of methodology, change... There's, there's so many things that are in that. So the rebuild that I love is one that takes time. And like I said, we're still at the beginnings of it. So where we're at at the moment is where we're at. And every, every sort of team I've been at that has been different. There have been different challenges. You know, how much the team changes in one window, how much, you know, the, how much of a change it's been from the previous regime. There's all these kind of other factors that go into it. But, you know, we're still... You know, I'm at pains to, to sort of keep saying it but we're still at very much the infancy of what I want to try and create in terms of the, the team and the club we want to be so that 
notwithstanding that, we understand that you know we still need to perform and, and get results so that, in my experience, that's what the only thing that accelerates that process is if you can get some real belief. And because with every performance, with every result, whatever resistance or barriers there are, slowly get chipped away. On this club, it's had some big name managers, real historic managers down the years. And you have achieved something already that none of them have achieved. No one has ever had a pop song sung about them. Um, firstly, Robbie Williams, do you know him? Um, have you ever met him? <laughs> and what did you think when you heard oh Robbie God. Williams? Changing the lyrics of one of his most famous that, songs. That's again. one of the most sort of backhanded, sort of <laughs> underwhelming compliments I've ever had. <laughs> You've had some unbelievably fantastic managers, big names, successful, and then there's you, Ange. You know, so and then and then have I ever heard of Robbie Williams? Where have I been living, mate? I mean, seriously, look. I, I, I get look. I love Robbie Williams. I think he's he's brilliant. He's a great entertainer. Um, I've got a, he made us brilliant. I think it was, came off the back of one of our supporters. Uh, look, it's, 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 it's great. Um, you know, the, the alternative is they make up songs about you that are less than complimentary. So I'll, I'll take it for what it is. But um, yeah, thanks for that, mate. I'll, 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 just, I'll just float out of here, you know, feeling good about myself. I'll rephrase the question next time. Uh, thank you. That's fine, mate. Thank you. Ali. Uh, well, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, previous managers at the club have occasionally spoken about... Successful, yeah, big name, yeah. I've yeah, yeah. yeah. um, spoken about having club signings that have come in, players that maybe the club really wanted, and they, I don't know if it's compromise or what they've, they've gone for. With your system and being such specific kind of players that you need, can that happen with you? Or are they very much the players that come in are things that you want? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know sort of club signings, what that means. I mean, I think I would never sort of approve a signing that I didn't think was going to fit into sort of the way we want to play and um, I, I guess if it's at a younger level at an academy level of course I think then you know the, it is the clubs but I think when you've got a, a senior manager and you, you, you appoint him and you give him the responsibility of sort of charting a course ahead you've got to give him the players that will suit the way he wants to play you know and um I think the evidence so far, like I said, with the players we've brought in, is that they've all made an impact, which which shows that you know that the brief is there that we're looking for players who will play the football uh, or, or fit into the system I want to play. So you know, I think, like I said, I'm not sure, I can't refer to the past, but you know, the only signings, like I said, that I wouldn't have a massive say over would be you know the signings at, at a club or at academy level or younger level where. You know, rightly so, the club, if they identify somebody who they think has real potential for the future, then they should go about doing that. What's the kind of balance, if you don't mind me asking, between the ones, a player that you will say, I really want him, and ones that maybe the scouting department come to you with? Yeah, the, there's the ones I really want, and the ones the scouting department put to me that I really want. There's no differentiation, mate. There's nothing, there's like, the scouting department should work hand in hand, you know, and, and look again, this is one of the things where we are very, very much in the infancy of. Like that's that's one of the parts of that we really haven't really. You know, this window's fair to say it's been an unusual one because of you know where the club is at the moment in terms of personnel in that area. So you know, moving forward though, there would there would be some more clearer processes within that. But again, like I said, the evidence we have so far is the players were bought in, and you can see that. You know that they've been aligned with with kind of my vision for the club. A lot of the players linked, especially today, seem to have been homegrown. How kind of I won't say restricted, but how much you've got to have that in one mind with the amount of foreign players and homegrown you have to have? Yeah, it is. It's 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 a balance. I think it's it's important because it's not just about sort of this window. It's where you're going to find yourself in the next couple of windows. There's got to be a strategy behind it. You know, you've got some under twenty one players at the moment who. You know, next couple of years will not be able to be fit under that criteria. So, I'm really keen on sort of building a team here. So we don't want to see too much, you know, you know, as much movement as we have, say, this window in the next two or three. So to do that, you're trying to hopefully build a squad that you know won't require too many major adjustments. And part of that is, you know, knowing that we need a sort of homegrown quota. So if we can fill that in, whether that's with players coming through our own academy or 
you know, uh, within the league, then I think it's important. Charlie? Look, I think um, as I think I said after the game, you know, we, the players were disappointed. You're always disappointed when when you don't achieve, you know, the outcome. And in, and in a cup game, that's obviously um, means you're out of a competition. But like I said, I I really like again their resilience. You know, uh, we we're playing away from home against a Premier League team. Obviously, made a lot of changes, which made it difficult for the gr for the group. Uh, a lot of guys hadn't played significant minutes. Um, which is always challenging, and I like the way they hung in there for the whole game, and we've still got to build on that. So, um, but ultimately, you know, we, they were disappointed, which you which you want, but also understanding that, again, like I said, we're, we're at the beginnings of a process, and um, it won't be the only hiccup. There'll be plenty of hiccups, you know. There'll be, um, yeah, plenty of challenges along the way. Um, it's how we kind of react to that and how we respond to that that's going to be the key. Oh, I can't wait, mate. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, mm. you know Don't lie, you love it, mate. Come on. <laughs>